this is Jo from Maths Tutor Me. Today we're doing statistics and we're going to be looking at displaying data and the column graph today. So statistics, a lot of statistics is about showing your results so that people can see at a glance what happened with your survey. So a column graph is just one of the ways of displaying the data today. So we have a little note here that a column graph, in a column graph, the vertical axis is always used to show the frequency. Um, so we're going to draw over here a graph and the vertical axis, which will go this direction. That one is always for the frequency. The horizontal axis will be for whatever the other variable is in your data. So let's have a look at our question here. There are 15 students who voted on who should be captain of the soccer team. The results were, and we have a list of names. So these are the names of the people they're choosing to be captain. So we have Scott as one of the names. We have Liam. And we have Scott again, that's the same name. We have Josh. We have anyone else? We have Zane. Okay, so there are four names that have been put up to be the captain of the soccer team. So let's go through and fill in the tally. Scott gets one vote. Liam gets the next one. Scott, Josh, Josh, Scott, Zane, Liam, Josh, Scott, Josh, Liam, Josh, Josh, and Scott. Okay, so it looks like it was pretty close. Scott got five votes, Liam got three, Josh got six, and Zane got one. So remember the frequency must always be on the vertical axis. Our frequency goes, our highest frequency was six, so using your ruler, you want to measure spaces going up to six. Often it's a good idea to use one centimeter if you have enough space. So we can easily fit one centimeter for each line here. If you're really squashed for space, you might want to use half a centimeter or even a different scale at times. Okay, across the bottom, we're going to be putting the names. So Scott is the first name. We have only four names, so we just need four little lines down there. Okay, so let's just put some numbers on here. That was our frequency. And down the bottom is the name. So we have Scott, Liam, Josh, and Zane. Okay, so now we want to draw a column for each of those. Let's start with Scott. He has a frequency of five. What we do is we start halfway between the beginning here and Scott. We're going to start our column here and we're going to go up to the number five. Okay, and then halfway from Scott to Liam, we're going to draw another line going up to the five. And if we join across the top, that is our first column. Scott, his column goes up to a frequency of five. Liam, his column goes up to a frequency of three. So we start here right at the same line as before, but this will go up to three. So we'll just draw a little mark there. And then halfway between, we go up and that will be Liam's column. Josh has six, so again, from here we go up to six. And over here, our second, the other side of that column, six. And Zane had one, so we'll draw a little mark there. And keeping that column the same width, hopefully, the whole way through. So try to get as neat as you can. It's, it's very hard to get it looking absolutely perfect. You want your columns to be about the same width the whole time. 
nice and square using the ruler to measure everything if you can. Okay, so that is a column graph. And you can see there that Josh has the highest column. So he would be the school cap, the soccer captain. So which student will become the soccer captain? Josh. He got the most votes. Okay, so just one question because I take a little bit of time to draw up. Time for you to try this. Okay, so here's another question just like the one I've shown you. You need to fill in the table and then construct your column graph. Pause the video, give this one a go, and then restart to see if you get the same results. So, 20 students were asked what method of transport they used to get to school. The results were walk, car, bus, car, bike, yep, all the results are in there. Organize this data into a frequency distribution table. So let's list off all the methods of transport. We have walk, we have car, we have bus, walk, car, bus, car, bike. We haven't done bike yet. Okay, so I've run out of space, so hopefully that's all the different options in there. Let's fill in the tally. Walk is first, car, bus, car, bike, car, car, walk, bus, car, bus, walk, car, bus, bike, walk, car, car, bus, car. So let's fill in the frequency part. We have four, then nine, five, and two. Using our frequency distribution table, now we can draw a column graph. Remember the frequency is the vertical axis and our highest frequency is nine. So we're going to need nine spaces. So I can fit nine centimeters on here. So let's make a centimeter for each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And across the bottom, the horizontal axis is going to be the method of transport. So we're going to have walk, car, bus, and bike. Let's write those labels on. Don't forget to label them. So this is the frequency and method of transport. Now let's do our columns. So there was four students who walked. Remember to start halfway. We go up to the four, and then halfway to the next one, up to the four again, flat across the top. Car, there was nine. So let's now raise that up to nine. Halfway to the next one. Flat across the top. Next one is five, so that's going to be here. Draw another line on the other side. Joining that up. And bike was two. Okay, there it is. There is our column graph. A few questions to answer now. How many students rode a bike? Well, we can read that from our graph. Here is bike and there was two, or we could also get that from the table. So two students rode a bike. What was the most popular method of transport? That's going to be the biggest column, which is car. Also can be seen over here by the highest frequency. Okay, hopefully you got those answers. That's the end of the lesson on column graphs. Keep practicing and I'll see you next time.